tons of tech news today and let's start out with this. You can actually just buy a Steam Deck now. There's no like waiting list. Just buy now, now expected to ship in like one to two weeks. But hey, you can buy a Steam Deck rather than a long waiting list. I did finally uh, reach the end of my waiting list and get a Steam Deck pretty recently and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I haven't had the chance to use enough to do a full review at this point. I may do that at some time on the channel. I don't know. Um, but it's been a lot of fun just to be able to pick that up, play. I'm using a lot more than I thought I would and actually using my gaming PC a lot less. So <laughs> anyway, uh, Steam Decks are now available and also, it looks like the uh, the docks, so if you want to dock it to a TV, that kind of thing, that has been taking forever to come out, but it looks like those are now available for reservation as well. Now let's jump into some performance leaks from, uh, you know, let's look at this article version of it. Um, so it's looking like the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte graphics card has been tested and some performance leaks, we're seeing some stuff in 3 Mark specifically. Now the source of this is coming from a post on the Chip Hell forums, I believe. Although I'll link all my, my uh, sources in the description. I'm getting this from a WCCF tech article. It's been reported by a few other places as well. Now, there's a variety of tests here, and again, since the 4080, you know, it's the 4090 that's coming out this month, and wow, less than a week now. Uh, the 4080 we won't be seeing until, um, until November, and I wasn't sure if, you know, press drivers would already be out for that now. I don't think these are sampled, so it's a little suspicious, but I mean, the reported stats uh, on the screenshots and everything do seem to match up to what we would be expecting. So for some comparison results, if, if you're uh, interested, WCCF Tech does have some comp comparisons here up against some, some other cards. So this is 3D Mark Times by Extreme. Now it is important to note that 3D Mark Times by Extreme is not a game. This is a synthetic benchmark, so don't necessarily expect gaming performance to um, always completely match this. But they were seeing a score of 13,977, and you know, compared with 3090 Ti, that scores around 11,282. And compared, if you want to compare it to a 3080, uh, which would score around 8,909, I mean, there, that is a, a performance bump for sure against the previous generation. So overall, they've got some uh, performance summaries for us here, showing it beat the uh, 3090 Ti in times by extreme by 20%. But then in Fire Strike Ultra, it's actually 29% faster. So we're seeing a big difference here based on which test you're looking at. And in Port Royal, uh, which does feature ray tracing, it's, uh, it was showing up as 16% faster. Uh, looks like there was also some uh, Tomb Raider benchmarks revealed here as well. Um, although actually this screenshot looks more like Red Dead Redemption 2. So it looks like some Red Dead Redemption 2 numbers. Uh, and some, uh, this is definitely Shadow of the Tomb Raider looking at that. So interesting to see uh, these out here, although I've once again got to stress that this is, you know, just leaked screenshots on Chip Hell forums. Uh, like I said, I, it, it's a little odd considering what the driver situation would likely be for a card like this if you actually had it right now. But there were even more leaked out a little bit later. Uh, and this one, uh, this time it's comparing against the previous generation 3080 within the headline, seeing it 62% faster than the 3080. And I mean, fair enough, we're comparing the uh, the real 4080, <laughs> you know, the 16 gigabyte version one, um, up against the previous generation. Now this one is, uh, let's see, so yeah, some more Time Spy numbers. This is um, just Time Spy, not Time Spy Extreme. So that would be running at, I believe, a lower resolution, basically, is one of the major differences. Uh, and here we see the 4080 16 gigabyte at 28,929, uh, compared to like a 6950 XT at 21,948. We're seeing 3090 uh, Ti at 21,884. Anyway, you get the idea. So we are definitely seeing a, you know, a performance jump over the uh, current flagships and all of that coming from this. Um, when they're summarizing it here, uh, okay, those were the results I think we saw from uh, last time. Anyway, uh, let's move along here and get on with, we're seeing a lot of unboxings of RTX 4090s 
and I've just got to say they look absolutely huge. You've got your, uh, you know, banana for scale, of course, <laughs> and all of that. Um, I liked watching uh, the Jay's Two Cents video. I don't have a screenshot of that up here right now. Uh, but showing the Strix 4090 just not even fitting in a pretty normal PC case. <laughs> so, uh, whereas a 3090 Strix did. So, yeah, it's... Um, Make sure you've got a big PC if you're going to be jumping on one of these. Uh, maybe I should measure mine. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're seeing some more pricing from various, uh, you know, brand, you know, AIB partner models and things like that coming out. And it is looking like they are usually offering at least one model at the, you know, low, low MSRP of sixteen hundred dollars. Um, with some coming in a little bit above that, these are Zotac cards. And we are seeing them listed. I'm in the way, so let's just like, I don't know, Thanos snap. Ah, I disappeared. Anyway, we're seeing $1,700, $1,650, and $1,600 for these models here. Uh, you know, different cooler designs and all that. I don't know what I think about this little curved uh, Zotac cooler design this time around, guys. Maybe it'll fit some people's tastes better than mine. I don't know. But anyway, um, we're seeing a new 3D Mark test uh, featuring Intel's XCSS technology coming out. So if you want to be testing out that, getting some, uh, see how your GPU runs it, just how it visually compares versus TAA and all of that, that could be an interesting tool to play around with. And speaking of Intel's XCSS technology, we have now seen it. Uh, added to a few more games. We've been seeing them trickle out even though the uh, graphics cards themselves are not quite out yet. Um, but it's looking like uh, it recently hit uh, Hitman 3, The Rift Breaker, Redout 2, uh, and Enlisted, and Spider-Man Remastered, and um, the Spider-Man Remastered uh, update I believe also added in FSR 2.1. Uh, which is interesting. Yeah, FSR 2.1.1. If I have time, that would be fun to test out. I don't know if I will. But this means that now Spider-Man Remastered will be a great place to do visual comparisons between XCSS, DLSS, and FSR 2.1.1. And we've seen that it should feature the new frame generation technology for DLSS on the new 4000 series cards. So Spider-Man Remastered could be an interesting... Uh, visual benchmark, or if you want to, I don't know, benchmark is the right word, but visual comparison here. But lots of XCSS being added in here. Um, now note that while that does support non-Intel cards, as I've tested my recent videos, it the, the amount of performance boost you might get out of it without having Intel's XMX accelerators can be a little bit limited, but hey, there you go. Um, uh, speaking of more of the 40 series coolers and the, uh, you know, unboxings and all that, um, uh, the Gamers Nexus channel had a really cool video with one of the uh, thermal engineers from NVIDIA talking a lot about cooler design and, like, seeing some of them cut in half. And it gets very technical, but I found this video very interesting, talking about the fans and cooler designs and... Uh, how thermals work and all that. So definitely take a look at that if you're interested in how the heck do you cool a GPU with this kind of TDP. Um, it's pretty interesting. Now, uh, we're seeing that the uh, 7950X is now listed as the top choice for the RPCS3 Sony PS3 emulator. Uh, this is coming from the uh, official, uh, you know, uh, developer's CPU ranking list, and this seems to be primarily due to its AVX 512 support, uh, which uh, the RPCS3 emulator does utilize for very good performance gains. Uh, so that's definitely a place where the new Ryzen 7000 series uh, with that AVX 512 support um, are flexing their muscles a little bit. Now, I found this pretty interesting because We've been seeing a whole bunch of PlayStation, you know, former, formerly exclusive to PlayStation console games coming to PC recently, and it's been great. They have some really good games, and um, most of the games have actually been working really well. Like I said, that Spider-Man port uh, is awesome. But when will we be getting them, right? How long will it take to get to the PC? 
And it's looking like live service games are planned to be day one releases on PC. Got to start getting that microtransaction money ASAP. Uh, but it's looking like single player games will take at least a year past their PlayStation launch to reach the PC. So, you know, don't expect to see the new God of War, you know, uh, day one. You'll be waiting a while longer. And this is the from, coming from the head of PlayStation Studios, Herman Holst confirmed that single-player games from PlayStation Studios will release at least one year later on PC. Hopefully that means that they'll continue to have lots of time to do a quality PC port, because that is very important, of course. Now, it's looking like AMD is um, seeing some weak PC demand, with desktop and notebook sales reporting uh, at drop by 40%. So, I mean... I think we saw such record demand over the whole pandemic situation with all the work from home and everybody needing a new PC for their Zoom calls and whatnot, that it's completely expected, in my opinion, for, for all of the sales figures to drop on this kind of stuff. Now we're seeing the Intel's Core i9-13900K being overclocked to 8.2 gigahertz and the, with room for more. So. Uh, of course, this is obviously on liquid nitrogen. That's what's going on right there. Uh, so don't be expecting to, uh, you know, uh, do that yourself while you're gaming. You know, you need. I know frames win game, guys. Win games, but not going to be too stable. Anyway, it's looking like the EA app is now out of beta. Uh, that was being worked on to replace Origin, so it's looking like it will be officially replacing Origin shortly. And um, there's rumors that Starfield could feature some RTX integration. And um, I was going to go into these uh, details a little bit more, but I have uh, just noticed what time it is, and I woke up late this morning. <laughs> I need to get this video done, guys. <laughs> Got to get to work. Anyway, it's looking like Need for Speed Unbound uh, drops a first trailer and a December release date, and it is reporting DLSS support and HDR support on the PC. Um, so that's good uh, news. And then we're also seeing that the Dead Space remake has its PC system requirements revealed, and it's recommending the 2070 and the 6700 XT, but if you want to look more details here, the minimum requirements, uh, the processor is a Ryzen 5 2600X and an i5-8600 with 16 gigabytes uh, of RAM listed as the minimum. Many games still list 8 as the minimum, so I do note that the minimum is being listed as 16. And the uh, minimum graphics cards are uh, RX 5700 or a GTX 1070. Note that it's not telling us what sort of resolution and frame rate and graphic settings to expect from this. So this isn't one of those big system requirements charts that give us all that kind of information. But if the minimum means something like, you know, 1080p 30 FPS, then, you know, I mean, I get that these are a bit, you know, older at this point, but I mean, especially the 1070, but I don't know, a lot of games have... have lower minimum, or sorry, uh, yeah, lower minimum requirements. And then the recommended, which I would assume is usually at least 1080p, 60 FPS with, with reasonable graphic settings. But again, it's not actually stating that, so we can't know for sure. We're seeing the 6700 XT or the RTX 2070 from, uh, from NVIDIA. And then we're seeing the processors as a Ryzen 5 5600X or an i5 11600K. So there you guys go. I've got to get to work. There's your PC news for the day. I hope all of you have an excellent day.